What's going on guys? It's your boy Yankee Dewey. Welcome to the channel. All right guys, so for today, we're gonna do a little bit of a laid back video. Haven't really done a car vlog video in a while. Actually feels kind of good. So the topic of today's video is pretty simple. When you go to buy a Mustang, a 2019 Mustang, are there any useless options or useless features? And if so, what are they? And if there are, what are my opinions and what do I think? So to quickly kind of go over what I have here, um, this is my 2019 Mustang GT. Just to quickly recap for you guys, this has the 10-speed automatic. We have the 401A package, which basically includes the 12-inch uh, instrument cluster display. We have the premium sound b &O system 12 speaker and of course we have much more if you guys want to check out my review video of this car you guys can certainly check that out i'll leave the link in the description box below so first off i just want to say you know there is a lot of videos out there talking about the differences between the 2018 and the 2019 mustangs i'm not really going to do that um, in this video but i am going to say why i bought a 2019 over a 2018 this is purely just something of my own personal opinion this is something that i personally do I never buy the first model year model all right that came out bad what I mean is okay so the 2018s came out they were the first car the first refreshed s550 they were the first year I never buy the first year I always go for the year after so as a perfect example my 2016 GT I bought instead of a 2015 GT the 2015 was the new you know year it was the new s550 platform even though i really really wanted a mustang badly i didn't buy the 2015 and even though i really wanted another s550 mustang i really wanted a 2018 i didn't buy the 2018 i went for the 2019. there's a reason i do that okay um and it's just personal it's not anything really you know wrong or anything like that with 2018s the thing for me personally is i never like to early adopt. I never like to be that early adopter because there's always the issue that there's going to be problems. You know, there's always that that possibility. And with the 2018 Mustangs, you could definitely make that argument that there has been some issues with that car that, you know, we hope for the 2019s at least anyway, uh, that have all been resolved. It's kind of the same story with the Focus RS, like the 2016 Focus RSs. Uh, they have that gasket problem. Now, what people will always say to me about that, you know, they'll always say, well, that's why I have a warranty. That's why I have a warranty. Well, to those people, I say, yes, that's true. You do have a warranty and, you know, the companies will own up and fix the problem. But there's really two problems with that. Number one, I don't usually keep my car stock. All right. Uh, that's number one. Number two, um, who wants to go in and get warranty work? I mean, really, seriously, it's a pain in the ass. And yes, they will fix the problem. But still it's a pain in the ass and I have to run around town I have to get the car in my car has to be gone for X number of days or even weeks I've been burned in the past by early adopting so now I just make it a thing I always buy the model year after the new release or after the new refresh so back to kind of the main point of the video any useless options when it comes to purchasing your new 2019 Mustang the answer really is no I guess um, I guess it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Me, personally, there was some useless things. First of all, there was this thing called the Ford Safe and Smart Package, and that basically included some useless things to me anyway, like radar-guided cruise control, rain-sensing wipers, that kind of thing. Now, that might be nice for someone who wants, you know, their Mustang to be more luxurious, to be smarter in terms of technology. Uh, they want that uh, convenience. Probably someone who's looking to more or less just daily drive the Mustang. To pay for that option, you have to really, really want it. Of course, I just thought it was a waste of money. Second option I neglected to have on my Mustang is the Magnaride suspension. Now, Magnaride is pretty freaking cool, okay? I'm not gonna lie. It's really, really great. And if you pay the extra $1,600 to get it on your car, hey, that's wonderful, that's great. I actually was going to buy a 2019 Mustang with the Magna Ride, but then when I took it for a test drive, for me and the purposes, what I'm gonna be using this car for and how I'm gonna build it up, it just wasn't worth the extra $1,600 to me. The thing about the Magna Ride, I think it's a great thing to have if you're gonna daily drive your Mustang, which I don't daily drive this car, but if you're gonna daily drive it, then yes, I think that's wonderful. And I think for the street, it's actually a really nice setup because I'm gonna tell you right now, that Magna Ride feels very good on the street and 
it soaks up the bumps and I think honestly you could take a Mustang just like this one like mine with Magnaride this just has the standard performance pack suspension okay um, if you were to take the two cars and take them on almost any road I think that that car I think you could be quicker in that car I think an average person could be quicker in the Magnaride and the reason I say that is because that Magnaride really does a great job at soaking up the bumps and keeping that car like really really stable on the road when you're driving hard now I'm gonna be actually tracking this Mustang so for me personally I felt that it wasn't quite good enough for the track it felt like there was you know some things lacking and that's kind of true because if you buy a 2019 performance pack level 2 I know they actually go ahead and they revise the Magnaride suspension to be harder and firmer for the racetrack this then goes to really prove my theory that yes the Magnaride is great for the street if you, you know if you want to be a hooligan on the street it's wonderful but for the racetrack I'm not really sure. I personally like the setup in my 2016 Mustang better. I feel that that car handles better than the Magna Ride. Um, so that's really my opinion on that. Um, get the Magna Ride if you can afford the $1,600. Seriously, it's really that good. But now another option I left out of my car is the Recaro seats. The reason for this is actually pretty simple. Now as you guys know, I raced my 2016 GT at Grand Sport Speedway. And the few times that I've been there, I've seen quite a few guys who actually race Mustangs. Yeah, I actually get that question a lot. Are there a lot of Mustangs racing at the, at the racetrack? And the answer is yes, there actually is. A lot of people track Mustangs. And I've talked to four, four individuals who have Mustangs, two of which have S550 Mustangs, and the two of which have Boss 302s. All four people, they all said the same thing about the factory Recaro seats. They said it's not worth it for the street, it's just not as comfortable as the standard seats. And then they said for the racetrack, they're just not good enough. They just don't hold you in, they don't support you enough. And again, that is unanimous across the four people who I've talked to, four people who actually daily drive their Mustangs. Not only do they daily drive them, but they actually take it to the racetrack and they race. So that right there says to me, that the Recaros just really weren't worth it. Maybe you can have Recaros in your Mustang and you like them and hey, that's fine. But honestly, for all that money that you spend on those Recaros, you can buy the Corbo racing seats that I have in my 2016 Mustang and those are fantastic. Those are a lot less money than going out and buying those Recaros. So as far as the rest of the features I have, in my car, you know, some people could say, you know, you could do away with the digital dash. Personally, I really like it, and it was, you know, one of the reasons. I mean, it was a small reason, but it was one of the reasons why I bought this uh, this car. I just really, really like it. And yes, you could suffice just fine without it. And for some people, it just may not be worth it. 12 speaker BNO system, yes, I, th I think that's worth it. I, I really, really do. The active exhaust for like 800 and whatever dollars it is, uh, I think that's worth it too. Again, it's not a necessity, it's not, but it is nice to have, especially considering that the exhaust on the 2018s and 2019 Mustangs actually sound really good from the factory. In conclusion, are there really any useless features? Well, again, I think it's to each his own, you know? But definitely I can come out and say and give you guys maybe some insight on some things. And, you know, if you're looking to buy a Mustang and you want to know how you want yours spec'd out, again, you can go watch my review video of this Mustang and you can see some of the features. To me, personally, I got my car spec'd out exactly the way I wanted it. And the features that I thought were useless, I didn't add to this car, okay? But that doesn't mean that some other people won't find it useless or stupid or whatever. My Mustang is pretty much fully loaded. I mean, again, um, we didn't get that uh, safe and smart package, which was the $1,000. Uh, we didn't get the Magna Ride, which again is about another $1,600. And if you want to look at some of the options and explore this Mustang a little bit more and some of the features, you can go ahead and check out my review video. I went in not complete depth with some of the systems in this car, but I definitely gave an overview and you can certainly use that as a tool to help you in figuring out what you want in your Mustang and how you want it spec'd out. All right guys, well, I think that's pretty much it. Thank y'all for watching, really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy guys.